Okay, so in today's video, we're going to have a look at laws of indices. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to have a look at some of these questions. So we're going to simplify this, uh, and we're going to just remember a couple of little rules here. So when you are timesing with powers, so x to the power of something, let's call it a, multiplied by x to the power of b, you add together the powers there. So you can do x to the power of a plus b, whatever they are as long as obviously it is the same base piece here, which is an x in this case. As well as that, we can have a divide. So x to the power of five, let's imagine, or let's call it x to the power of a again, divided by x to the power of b. In this case, you subtract them, you do the opposite, and that becomes x to the power of a minus b. Okay, we're going to be applying a lot of these rules again only when the bases are the same and again it's an x in both of these so we can subtract the powers when we're dividing. Now if we have a look at this one that we've got here, we've got a multiplication on the top and then remembering that this line here also means divide so then we're dividing by x to the power of 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up the top to start with and let's see what we've got up there. So we've got x to the power of 5 multiplied by x to the power of 2 so we can add the powers together there so that would become x to the power of 5 plus 2 which is 7 and that's all over x to the power of 4. Now we can apply this second rule where we're subtracting them because we've got x to the power of 7 divided by x to the power of 4, so 7 take away 4 leaves us with 3, so our final answer would be x to the power of 3, and that's our final answer there. So I'll look at something slightly different, there's just one, one example of how we can have a look at them. Okay, so we've got x to the power of 3, y to the power of 5, divided by x, y squared. So we've got different letters here next to each other. So we can't add the powers with the x's and the y's because they're different base pieces there. But we can have a look at the x's on the top and the x's on the bottom. So we've got to divide. On the top, we've got an x cubed here. And on the bottom, we've got an x, which is x to the power of 1, even though we don't write the 1. So we can subtract the powers just looking at the x's. So looking at the x's there, x to the power of 3, take away the 1 on the bottom, x to the power of 1, leaves us with x to the power of 2. Then we can look at the y's separately. So we've got y to the power of 5 and y to the power of 2. And if we divide them, we'll subtract the powers, and that will leave us with y to the power of 3 and there's our final answer. So again just looking at those letters completely separately what's going on with the x's and then what's going on with the y's. So I'll look at one more before we have a go. Okay so in this question we've got numbers and we've got letters. Now numbers are always just treated like numbers that's never going to change so whether that's timesing or dividing and here it's dividing so we've got 14 divided by 7 just looking at these numbers here so nothing fancy happens there it's just 14 divided by 7 which is 2. Then we can move on to one of the letters. So let's have a look at the x's as they're written next. We've got x to the power of 5 and x to the power of 3. And we're dividing there, so we can take away the powers. That leaves us with x to the power of 2. And that's the x's dealt with. And now we can look at the y's. So we have y to the power of 3 divided by y to the power of 2. Subtracting those leaves us y to the power of 1. But again, when we've got a power of 1, we don't have to write that. So we can get rid of the y to the power of 1 and just write y. And there's our final answer for that one. Okay, obviously we could have a scenario as well where you're multiplying with numbers at the front. So let's imagine you could have 2x to the power of 3. You could have that multiplied by 3x to the power of 5. And you would treat that in exactly the same way. Numbers multiply numbers, making 6. And then you can add the powers, making x to the power of 8. So you could have it multiplying as well, a similar scenario. Um, but I, like, I quite like this division when it looks a little bit more complicated. And actually it's okay to do. So here's some for you to have a go at. So pause the video there, have a go at these, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so the first one. Tidying at the top leaves you with x to the power of 10, and you've got x to the power of 5 on the bottom. And then we subtract the powers, so we get x to the power of 2. 10 take away 5, x to the power of 2. On to the one below. Tidying at the top again, you get x to the power of 8. And we're dividing that by x to the power of 2. Again, subtracting the powers there gives you x to the power of 6, 8 take away 2. Moving on to these ones with numbers. So we've got 28 divided by 8, which leaves us with 3. We've got x to the power of 4 and x to the power of 3. So subtracting those leaves you with x to the power of 1. So we'll just write x. And then y to the 5 divided by y to the 3. 5 take away 3 is 2. So y to the power of 2. Final answer. And the last one here, 60 divided by 12 is 5. Subtracting those x powers leaves you with x to the power of 3. And subtracting those y powers leaves you with y to the power of 1. Okay, again, not writing in the one now, but you would be wrong to do so. All right, let's have a look at some slightly different ones. Okay, so we've got some brackets involved here. Now, when you've got the brackets here, you can just apply a little simple trick, which is x to the power of a 
brackets to the power of b, you'd multiply the powers and it leaves you with x to the power of a times b. Thinking about this logically though, x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 5 just means x to the power of 4 multiplied by itself 5 times, so x to the power of 4 times by itself 5 times, so 2 more x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 4, there we go. And if we were doing that we would just add together all the powers. So we don't need to write this out every time because if we add together four fives that is the same as just timesing it by five. So when it comes to this process we can just times together those powers there. So four times five is twenty. So it's x to the power of twenty. Okay nice and simple and we've got brackets. Let's have a look at one more. On this one here we've got a number involved. So just like before numbers always get treated like numbers. So we've got two which is getting cubed on the outside and the x squared which is getting cubed. So we've got to work out two cubed to start with, and 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So we have 8 in the start there. Then we apply our little bracket rule there by multiplying the powers. So we have x, multiply those powers, gives us 2 times 3, which is 6. So you'd get 8x to the power of 6. If you remember, actually what you're doing here is 2x squared times 2x squared times 2x squared again, which leaves you with 2 times 2 times 2, which gets you the 8 and you add together three of those twos for the power of x. Right, here's some for you to have a go at. So not many questions there. Pause the video, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, let's have a look then. So multiplying the powers in this first top left one gets you x to the power of 4 times 3, 12. Nice and easy, those ones. And the one below, 5 times 6 gives us 30, so we get x to the power of 30. There we go. Starting to introduce some numbers here. So we have 3 and we've got a cubit. So three cubed is three times three times three, which is 27. And then just applying the multiplication trick for our, for our power there, five times three is 15, so 27x to the 15. And then the very last one here, five, and it's a squared on the outside, so five squared is 25. And then multiplying the powers gives you seven times two, which is 14. And there is your final answer for that one. So that's just some examples of some of the laws of indices. Obviously there are lots of different types of questions that you can have for these, but knowing these rules and some of these little tricks can help to tackle most of them. So that's the end of the video. If you liked it, please comment, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.